Chavre, how are you? Today is Bez Shvat. Yesterday was Rishchei Shvat. I hope everyone is well, gesund, stark, and freilich begash misubiruchnes, healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. Um, I would just like to say one point before we begin that I received feedback from some of my Talmidim that I should translate more in English some of the terms and words that I have been speaking. So I'll try. So we're going to speak now a thought for the week for Parshas Vo'era. We'll start as usual with a posik from the Rebbe's Kapitel. Kapitel Kufyutes, posik. Lam posik lamid vov. Hat libi el ede secho va al el boza. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to greed. So maybe we can interpret this to mean hat libi el ede secho. Incline my heart, open me up to your witnesses. Ede secho, things that are in this world, that reveal your presence, that reveal your Hashem's existence. And I shouldn't turn to greed, which means to think of myself. And this week's Parsha is the beginning of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Everyone knows the Remez, Parsha's Vo'era, Vav Aleph, Vav Aleph equals seven. Parsha's Boi, Beis Aleph, equals three. In this week's Pasha, we have seven of the ten Makais, seven of the ten plagues, and next week's Pasha, we have the last three. So in this week's Pasha, is the beginning of going out of Egypt. And as the Pasuk says, the famous Pasuk, Psukim, that speak about the four verses of redemption, sorry, sorry, etc. And it says, I will, I will take you out, I will save you, I will redeem you, I will take you, etc. etc. I will bring you. So as we all know, any student of Hasidism knows. The word Mitzrayim means limits, <coughs> inhibitions, restrictions, boundaries, prejudices. And just that we had the Jewish nation, had an exodus from the land of Egypt, so too every single one of us in our Avodah Hashem, and our service of Hashem, has to experience and go through a Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, an exiting and transcending of our limits, of our inhibitions, and this is what the Maimar Azal means in a certain sense, and especially as explained in the Chsidis, Bechol doir va doir, and the Alter Rebbe adds, Bechol yoim ve yoim, chayiv odom lire set satsme kili otzim mitzrayim. Every single day we have to achieve a level of escape, a level of liberation, a level of redemption in our personal service to Hashem and in our self improvement and development. So, getting back to the post we mentioned before, where we turn to Hashem and we ask Him to focus on the significant other, you, Hashem. And not to greed. In other words, the more to strive for selflessness, transcending self, and turning away from our ego. That's what the post could mean. That's the theme of the Parsha. Like David Tzias Mitzrayim. And now, what does it mean in our personal Aveda more to be applied? So there's a famous Hayoim Yoim of Chof Hei Tevis, of the 25th day of Tevis, where the Rebbe brings an extraordinary point. And he says the difference between the Tzias Mitzrayim in the times of the Chumash, the original exodus from Egypt, and our personal liberation and redemption is that that was a story of destruction and escape and shattering. And it came through the 10 plagues, physical 10 plagues. We nuked Egypt 10 times and then we 
disengaged. But in our personal liberation, and so too a Mashiach will come, the story of our exodus is not one of destruction, but one of re reconstruction, one of fixing, one of elevating, one of transforming, an engagement. And as he says in the Hayyei Meim over there, being invelt hechavavelt, being of this world, but out of this world, being a part of the world, but apart, separate. That's the true idea of Yitzhiz Mitzrayim. How you're in the world, but you're not affected by the world. You're not brought down. It doesn't have a negative impact on you. From this, we can come to another point, which is a major point in the secular world too. When we talk about business and relationships, there's a difference between the word power versus influence, or power versus influence and persuasion. Power means through force. Overwhelming, overpowering. Influence, real influence, and persuasion means it's voluntary. That person agrees. It's not a sum zero game. It's a win-win. The other side agrees with you. The other side, the enemy became an ally. You didn't use power as overpowering, but influence. You influenced the other person. You persuaded the other person. And this brings us to the month of Shvat. Another interpretation of the word Shvat. The word Shvat can be connected to Shevet. A scepter, a staff, which is a sign of rulership, dominion, and power, you could say. But then in that itself, there's two types of power. One power is power in the regular sense, but the other definition of power means a powerful influence. You're powerful at persuasion. And this originates from a posik in Tanakh. And the Rebbe once spoke about it in relation to a very interesting story. First I'll say the posik. And then we'll go to the story. There's a posik in Zechariah, Kapitel Yeralef, Posik Zion, where it says, Ve'ekach li shnei makleis, I will take to myself two staffs, La'achat karosi noyam, one I called noyam, which means pleasantness, or La'achat karosi chayvlin, and the other one I called destroyer. So we have two types of staffs, two types of sticks, and by the way, that's another connection to this week's Pasha. And getting back to that Yom Yom. Moshe Rabbeinu's staff, which he did all the miracles in Egypt, could be called Makal Choivlim. He used it to destroy an enemy. He used it to wreak havoc, to bring chaos. Ultimately, because that's what Hashem wanted, to display his miracles. But it came about through a way of destruction. When Mashiach will come, it's not going to be a makal chayvim. It's not going to be an instrument, a cane of destruction, but makal noyam. It'll be only through pleasantness, through our work of changing the world and transforming the world. And the story that I won't mention before was as follows. One time, the Rebbe Rashab came back. This is the Friedrich Rebbe's father. The story probably is in the late... In, in, in 18, uh, when the Friedrich Rebbe was a child, so that must be in 1860, 1850. Those years, so the Rebbe Hashab once left the town of Lubavitch, he went on a trip, and when he came back, he brought a gift to the Friedrich Rebbe. And what was the gift? The gift was a beautiful cane with a silver handle. His wife, Stern, uh, Rebbe Stern, asked the Rebbe Hashab, why did you buy this gift? Because she could tell immediately this was very, very expensive. Like a symbol of royalty. So, and she said, you know, especially considering our circumstances, the financial situation that we're in. I understand it's an only child with all, all of his mindless, all of his qualities. But, but to, to this degree, that you have to actually spend a lot of money to buy him such a gift. 
So the Rebbe Rashab said, I'll tell you the truth, while I was traveling, I met many fathers with their children, and I thought of our child and the difference, how special our child is, how unique he is, and it arose in me such feelings of love and gratitude that I decided to buy him this gift. So the Rebbe repeated this story, our Rebbe, and he said, from every single story, there's a lesson. And every single story that happens with tzaddikim is precise and bediuk, and we have to take a lesson. And what's the lesson? The Rebbe said, and then the Rebbe went into the whole explanation, that there's two types of sticks. There's a makal chayvlim, and there's a makal noyam. And the Rebbe explains the difference. And the Rebbe went into this word of the difference of the miracles that happened in Egypt, and, the, and what's going to happen when Mashiach comes, as we mentioned before. So the Rebbe says the reason why the Rebbe Rashab gave the free the Rebbe the stick was because this was an allusion, a remez to leadership, to Nesias. That one day, one day, the free the Rebbe would be a Nasi. He'd be a great leader of the Jewish nation. That's what the stick represents. Leadership and royalty. But what sort of stick is it? It's not a makal chayvel, it's makal noyam. And this is the significance of silver. In Hasidus, it's explained that kesef, silver, comes from the Lushen, from the word of nichsef, nichsafti, yearning, love. It's a cane of love. And this is the method, this was the, the approach, the leadership style of the Friedrich Rebbe. And the Rebbe used the words, ufeben und zuziehen. The Friedrich Rebbe lifted up others and he drew them close like a scepter of a king when he draws it outward to a person to draw that person in closer. A sign of love. A sign of affection. To draw the other person in and to lift them up. And the Rebbe says this was the style of leadership of the Friedrich Rebbe. And obviously this is the style of the Rebbe as we see in the countless stories of infinite care, infinite concern, infinite sensitivity. And this is the lesson that the Rebbe says we have to learn from the story. That in today's day and age, the only way to lead and the only way to have real impact is through influence, is through persuasion, and primarily an influence and a persuasion which is permeated and saturated with love. And this is what we are all in the business of doing, making the world a dira b'tachtoinim, through being less selfish, becoming selfless, which means the focus, the attention, is on the other, on the mission, on Hashem, on another Jew. And this is what it means that we go out of our own limitations our personal liberation in Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. And we have to remember that it has to be all in a way of Shevet Noyam. That our whole life is a life we project love and sweetness and pleasantness towards the other. And if we keep all these lessons in mind, redemption and Shevet, Shvat, in a way of love and positivity, will bring about the Gula Amitza Shlema, take it from Yad Mamish. Posting from my home, Be'ez Hashem Barich, your man in Melbourne.